Hi, Nevada community. Hope you guys are all doing well out there. I'm hoping we have more than three people watching us. I'm sure by the end of this we'll be up to at least 25. Uh, I'm Chris Koska, Superintendent Nevada Unified School District. I'm here with uh, Yancey Hawkins, our Assistant Superintendent of Business and Operations. Today we're going to do a virtual town hall. Uh, our focus for the day is going to be on our budget. Um, there are going to be, of course, some other questions that kind of work in here a little bit, but our, our primary focus needs to be on the budget today, and in the future we'll be doing more virtual town halls on important topics like uh, re-entry and how we come back to school for the 2021 school year. Um, I want to thank everyone in our community. Everybody has stepped up in their own way to make sure that our students and our staff have been able to find their best success as we've worked our way through this a very difficult spring. Um, our communities really come together and I'm really proud of how everybody is working hard to, to make this the best year for our kids. Um, I need to acknowledge that along with uh, all the hardship that we've already faced, COVID-19 is going to be presenting with our district and districts across our state and country with pretty profound uh, financial impacts. Um, and today we're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, and, and I'm going to put out a plea. I'm going to put out a plea that, uh, that we come together during this difficult time to, uh, to overcome the challenges that are before us. I know we have uh, the right community to work hard, uh, to make sacrifices so that we can do the best we can for all of our kids across our system. Uh, we're gonna provide you with some information today about our current budget situation. We wanna acknowledge that what we're gonna share with you is based upon a worst case scenario budget that has been presented by uh, Governor Newsom and the May Revise. And um, we hope that our fiscal situation will end up better than what we're going to share with you today. But unfortunately, this is what we know now, and this is the budget that we need to plan for. Uh, one thing that you're probably going to be thinking about, I hope you're going to be thinking about, is advocacy. And how do we advocate for more fiscal dollars for our public school system? I'm going to include in my weekly update or end of week update to you um, some uh, contact information you can share to advocate more for our public schools. Uh, in advance of this town hall, we collected questions. Uh, we're not going to be able to answer every single question that came in, uh, but we have worked really hard to make sure that we're able to address every theme. So all the different types of questions that, that have come in, and hopefully we'll be able to address uh, the questions that, that you submitted in the, in the best way that we can. So we're going to start with some general overview questions, and I'm going to ask Assistant Superintendent Hawkins some of these questions. So, uh, Yancey, the first question that I have for you is, um, what is the specific impact of the governor's proposed budget on NUSD? Thanks, Chris. So the governor proposed a uh, budget reduction of 10% to the LCFF, or Local Control Funding Formula. Uh, the impact to NUSD is over $7 million less than the previous proposal in January, uh, which is a 10% uh, reduction to our overall revenue. Okay, so that's a pretty significant hit. It's a very significant hit, okay. and at a time that is after when usually you make the decisions <laughs> right. for yeah. your budget. So, and at a time when we were being asked to do more. Absolutely. Yeah. A lot more. Yeah. So when you talk about, um, you've been through fiscal crises before, right? And how is this different from the Great Recession of 2008 to 2012, roughly? So it's different in the timing of it, mm -hmm. as well as the overall impact. So uh, this is a larger overall impact. Mm -hmm. The $54 billion was the shortfall between the governor's January budget and his May revise. Mm -hmm. um, and then the timing is significantly different. Um, the downturn in 08 started with the stock market crash um, in the fall. And that gave the state a lot of time and school districts a lot of time to see the impacts and move forward for the planning for their next year. Mm -hmm. This all happened... Um, you know, I think it was uh, March 13th mm -hmm. that we, um, the shelter in place basically started. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the timing for uh, when you looked at the timing, it 
hits immediately. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just a slow, right. uh, a slow impact. This was right. an immediate impact. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, a lot of our community members probably aren't clear about what the LCFF is. Can you tell us a little bit about LCFF, what, it, what the acronym means, and then um, what does that mean for our revenue? Absolutely. So the LCFF is the local control funding formula, and it's the guaranteed uh, state funding that uh, districts in California receives. The important part for us is it's by far our largest revenue um, that we bring in. It brings in over 70% of the revenue, um, and it's really the revenue that we rely on um, you know, for those additional costs that we incur year over year. Okay, good, thank you. So. I'm sure there's some community members that are saying, you know, can't we just wait a year? I mean, do we really need to make budget cuts now? Uh, what would happen if we didn't make any budget cuts now for, for the 2021 school year and we waited until the 21-22 school year? Thanks, Chris. So if the governor's budget is enacted, as you noted, uh, that's the scenario we have in front of us, mm -hmm. um, and NUSD does not make any reductions, uh, we would spend down our entire reserve uh, which is, you know, is our backup <laughs> funding, um, which is right now over 10% mm -hmm. of our annual expenditures. Mm -hmm. We would spend that down below the 3% required, state required reserve by June 30th of next year. Mm -hmm. And by the end of next summer, uh, we would be out of money. Mm -hmm. What happens if we run out of money? So if a school district runs out of money, that's when the state uh, intervenes. Mm -hmm. And what that means is you may, uh, I, I know you were, uh, you know, in some other districts mm -hmm. and uh, the, the state basically takes over the district. Mm -hmm. um, they send in a state administrator and more importantly, the community and the district lose all of their local control. Mm -hmm. um, every decision has to be made and approved by a state administrator mm -hmm. until uh, the district is back on uh, good financial footing. And the reality is, is if you think about the districts that have gone into state receivership, none of them have ever gotten back to good, solid financial footing. No, it's it's very, very difficult once you've you've gone into that. Yeah. Okay. Um, here's a, a one question that has come up really loud and clear, and and I appreciate the the passion behind this. And it's it, it's our is NUSD going to eliminate specialized programs like? Uh, MSA, STEM, et cetera. And I'll, I'll take that question. Okay. Um, I want to I want to say loud and clear that that no, we are not looking to eliminate any of our specialized programs at this time. Uh, at the same time, we need to acknowledge that our budget situation is dire, and we are going to need to look at all of the programs that we love and hold dearly to. Um, so we are going to have to consider budget reductions in all places across the system, and some of our specialized programs could, could see some cuts. But I want to be also really clear that, that all of our budget reduction work will not be done unilaterally. It will occur through a budget reduction process that will include broad community involvement. So, um, you know, I know we've gotten a lot, of, a lot of questions, a lot of passionate emails and responses about why are you looking to eliminate this program. I want you to hear loud and clear from me today that we are not looking to eliminate those specialized programs. They matter to us. They are important to us. Um, and we are committed to continuing those programs, okay? Um, all right, let's move on to the next question. Uh, the next question is, my child attends one of the specialized academic high school programs in NUSD via uh, interdistrict transfer. Will my child still be able to continue to attend this program in the 2021 school year and then beyond? Yeah, so yes, uh, interdistrict transfers have a positive financial impact um, on our budget and to our community. And so current interdistrict transfers will be honored um, in the, the ones that have already been approved and the ones that are ongoing. Okay, good. So I hope that puts some people at, at their minds at ease a little bit. Um, we value you and the role that you play in our district. Uh, athletics. So uh, what are the plans for athletics for the 2021 school year? Um, if we were entering into a normal year, my answer to this question would be very similar to the question for MSA and STEM and our other specialized programs. 
we need to acknowledge that the 2021 school year is not a normal year. Uh, everything that we continue to struggle with, with the pandemic, uh, the regulations put in place by public health and, and the California Department of Health and the governor, um, we need to work closely with uh, with our public health officers, with uh, California Interscholastic Federation, with the North Coast Section and MCAL to make important determinations about sports for the 2021 school year. Um, at this point, we do not have enough information from those groups to say what athletics will look like in the fall. Um, and then of course, also in the winter and the spring. Um, we know they are working hard to be able to provide us with that guidance to allow us to make those important decisions. Um, but we just don't have enough information yet to say what athletics look like and when kids are going to be able to get on the field. And I know that our, our students, our coaches, our parents are chomping at the bit to get to get back out onto the fields and, and particularly our, uh, our incoming seniors who are looking forward to that showcase year. Um, know that we will be sharing as much information with we can as soon as we can. And I also need to reiterate, like I said, for our other specialized programs, that uh, as we go through this budget process, we need to acknowledge that no program will be immune from these, these significant fiscal challenges that we have before us. Okay, next question. Um, as we prepare to cut the budget and cut programs, at what point are you willing to cut district office employees and administrators to save programs and maintain our lower class sizes? Um, I could say that, that we will need to make budgetary reductions to management at the district office as well as at the school sites. Um, these cuts could be made in a, in a myriad of different ways. Uh, we could eliminate positions. We could do across the board reductions to compensation for employee groups. We could do furlough days. We could do a combination of all of the above. Uh, another strategy that we're exploring is finding ways to increase revenue to the district by partnering with our other local school districts and providing services to them. You know, we have a lot of small districts in Marin County. Um, we are the largest district in Marin County. Um, we have uh, some experts in our building that we think might be able to assist across the county with some countywide programs, uh, potentially food service, potentially around English language learner support or uh, other areas around instruction. So we're also, you know, we, we can look at the expense side of the budget or we can look at the revenue side of the budget and, and, and we're gonna be exploring all of those possibilities. But what I need you, you to hear me say here is that, um, is that our administrators will be having to make some sacrifices as we go through this budget process. We don't know exactly what those will look like, um, but uh, our administrators are gonna need to take on their fair share of these reductions. Okay, uh, we have a special ed question. My child has a para support person to help facilitate her access to general education curriculum per her IEP or her individualized education plan. Is her para educator's job in jeopardy? And if so, what would the plan be to support her needs going forward? You wanna tackle that one? Yeah, so we're gonna do everything we can to ensure that all services included in a student's IEP will continue to be provided as is required with the Federal, individu the federal uh, Individuals with Disabilities Education Act or IDEA. Um, the re-entry task force will be reviewing how we provide services to our students, uh, including our special education students. Okay, great. And so our re-entry task force is holding their first meeting this afternoon. Uh, this is talk when, when a lot of times we say we have broad representation on a, <laughs> on a committee. Uh, that has never been more true than with this uh, task force. This task force is going to be somewhere between 130 and 150 different um, community members, uh, parents, uh, staff at all levels, um, our, our labor partners, uh, administrators at sites, administrators at district offices. So um, we are looking forward to that meeting tonight. That'll go from 4.30 to 6.30. Okay, uh, school closure. Uh, this is a topic that's come up a lot in Novato through the years. Uh, when we went into the Great Recession, uh, that was the time that the district opted to choose um, to close uh, Hill Middle School. Um, it's, 
the bottom line is that closing schools saves money. Uh, it also has an impact on our community. We need to acknowledge both of those things. We also need to acknowledge that due to uh, decreasing birth rates in Marin County uh, over the last uh, 10 years, really since the Great Recession, yep. uh, birth rates never rebounded after that, uh, we have approximately 600 less students in our elementary schools than we did six years ago. Uh, we went from an average class of about 600 students to an average class of about 500 students and sometimes even dipping into the 400s. So uh, we are going to need to have the discussion around school closure with our board of trustees. Uh, closing one elementary school would save NUSD approximately $450,000 annually. And this is something that's definitely going to be considered during the 2021 school year uh, with a possible uh, school closure during the 21-22 school year. Um, so we're still um, more than a year away from any potential school closure. Okay, um, when upgrading schools with bond money, is the district keeping in mind that a facility may no longer be used due to declining enrollment? Chris, absolutely. The district will take that into consideration when committing uh, Measure G funds. Uh, in the event of a school closure, the district would likely still uh, perform crucial maintenance projects on a facility, but would likely not make any significant upgrades to that facility. Okay. Sounds good, thank you. Um, there's a lot of chatter in Marin County about uh, the TK programs. Yep. Um, and would we be able to save money by eliminating our TK programs like other districts across the county have done? Um, what are your thoughts on that? So yeah, Chris, as you may have seen in the newspaper recently, uh, a district or two um, has canceled their TK program and that's after a couple other districts have done it in previous years. Um, that every district who has chosen to do that um, is been a basic aid district. Um, and I don't wanna get into the technicalities of school funding and what a basic aid school district is, um, but for those districts eliminating TK and reducing the number of students they have, saves them money. Mm -hmm. um, in Novato, that's not the case. Uh, all of our students, TK students, uh, receive funding from the state similar to our K through three students. Um, eliminating this program would reduce uh, the services to our community and would reduce our revenue. And uh, so we're not considering it at, at this point at all. Okay, good. So it's, it's a great service that we provide to the community. Eliminating TK for us would cost the district money Whereas eliminating that great service for those other school districts actually saves them money. Yep. Okay, good. So we're gonna take a pause from our script and we're gonna answer some questions from the, uh, from the Facebook feed. Um, the, the first one I wanna talk about is what are the impacts on the Novato Charter School? Uh, lots, of, lots of information, particularly to NUSD. Novato Charter School is, is a part of us. We're the chartering agency, they have their own uh, board, charter board, um, but, but they are an important part of us. And how will this, very briefly, how will this impact them if you're, if you're aware? Yeah, that, that's a great question. Um, you're right, we are the chartering agency and we provide oversight to them. Um, and so it's important to note, they are gonna see all of the same financial issues that, that we do. Mm -hmm. um, Charter schools and school districts like Nevada Unified are funded basically in the exact same way mm -hmm. now. There used to be some differences. Those have, have come clo much closer. Mm -hmm. And so the 10% cut to NUSD that we talked about, uh, Nevada Charter will see the same 10% reduction um, and will be seeing the, the same issues. How they will deal with that will be a decision between their community and, and their board, but we will obviously be there to support them mm -hmm. uh, through this project, I mean, through this process, mm -hmm. uh, as we are their authorizing agency and we are their oversight. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, I'll take the next one. The next question is what schools are being considered for closure? So, um, this is something that we're, we're at the beginning of this process. We did talk about elementary school size a couple of years ago. We brought a committee together. They made a lot of great recommendations that we have implemented. Um, and so the schools that we would be looking at are our elementary schools. 
I think that we will need to have a process that looks at every single elementary school and looks at the pros and the cons of a potential closure of that elementary school. And in the end, uh, the staff and probably a committee would bring a recommendation to, uh, to our governing board um, with one school to close. We are not anywhere near a position uh, to say what school that would be. I know there have been lots of rumors out there in the past that it's gonna be a particular school or another. I, I just wanna say clearly, as I said, when I was out um, doing a lot of Measure A con conversations in our community, that we do not have a plan to close a particular school. We are gonna do a process that starts from the beginning. It's gonna be an inclusive process. We're gonna look at all of the schools and the pros and cons, um, look at boundaries, um, and we'll make the best decision that we can should that be the direction that the board gives us. So not in a position yet to be able to, um, to, be able to say uh, whether or not we will, which school we will be closing. Um, and the next question is, is a bit of a, is a, bit of a uh, hypothetical question. Is there a clear sense of what is, is known yet? And I, I, I'm gonna guess that that question means just financially. Is this, is this, is there a clear sense of what we know currently? And what I'm gonna share is that, um, is that no, there really isn't a sense of what's known outside of what we're sharing with you today. Um, the governor has made this proposal. Um, he throws this out there in, in the middle uh, of May. Uh, then he has about a month to work with the legislature to come to, uh, to, come to a final budget for California. And, and that has to happen in June so that our legislators can continue to get their paychecks. So that has happened since that, that change to the rules has been passed. Um, one thing that we all need to remember though is that that budget can change. Just like your home budget, you, know, you have a budget and then something happens and the budget changes. We anticipate that this budget will change uh, repeatedly through the year and even could change as late as, August, as, as January. We expect that there will be a June budget. We expect that a uh, August budget will follow that and then potentially a January budget uh, could, could follow that. So this is gonna be very much a moving target. Um, and so yes, we are gonna be operating on a budget starting July 1 where we probably won't know what that budget actually looks like until January. So that may sound very odd, it feels very odd, but that's the situation that we find ourselves in. Okay, so I'm gonna get us back to our questions that we had in Chris, advance. Chris, jump in yeah, real please. quick on that? Yeah. The only thing that I would say about what we <clears throat> do know um, is that the magnitude is very significant. Yes. So the magnitude of the issue, um, and it may be in those new budgets that we will see additional you know, reductions to state revenue, but the magnitude we do know uh, is significant. But okay. yeah, thank you on everything Good. you said there. Okay, um, so I touched on this one at the beginning. Uh, what can we do as parents to advocate for funding, uh, to demonstrate that we need to maintain high quality education for our students? Uh, and I'm gonna provide you with some information in the end of week communication tomorrow uh, that will let you, um, that will let you know who to reach out to and how you can reach out to, and you do with that what you will. You know, no, no pressure, uh, that's, that's up to you and each of your households to make the decision if advocacy, advocacy is the right thing for you. Um, one thing I, I hear a lot in the community is why doesn't NUSD advocate for, uh, for more funding? And I wanna touch on that really briefly, and I wanna say that um, we do advocate for, for revenue. We have uh, trustees, actively involved in advocacy through Marin County, through what's called JLAC. Um, we have a number of members of our administrative team who are members of AXA or the Association of California School Administrators, and they have a strong advocacy platform for uh, funding for schools, and we participate in those events. Uh, same thing for our union partners, our labor partners with uh, Classified School Employees Association and the Novato Federation of Teachers. Um, those are large and powerful unions that have a large voice when it comes to advocacy, and we all work together to advocate for our public schools. Um, okay, so uh, let's talk some more about the, the fiscal implications of these potential reductions. Um, will there be summer layoffs for classified and certificated personnel? And if so, when will that decision be made and communicated? So 
uh, as you know, Chris, the, <laughs> the, the superintendent will be meeting uh, with our labor partners. You noted uh, CSEA, uh, the Nevada Federation of Teachers, uh, as well as representatives for our administration uh, next week to discuss the situation and options, uh, including summer layoffs uh, that are on the table and uh, more information will be available after that meeting mm -hmm. and after we bring back some additional budget information to our board of trustees mm -hmm. on June 9th. Okay. And typically, um, each of those units has a layoff process. So for all of our classified employees, there's one particular layoff process that a district would need to follow in order to reduce staffing of classified employees. That's for all the people that don't need a certificate to do the work that they're doing. Um, there's also another layoff process for all of our certificated employees. That's our teachers and our school, school site administrators, um, counselors, psychologists, things yep. like that. Typically, they have a layoff notice requirement that's only available prior to March 15th. Obviously, with this fiscal situation, we, were not, we didn't see this coming. Nope. Couldn't have seen this coming. Nope. Um, there is another layoff window that is available for certificated staff. So that would be for all of our certificated administrators. And that is uh, an August 15th layoff process. Almost uh, never happens. Yep. Um, to my knowledge, it happened. There was a window of opportunity for that to happen in, in the Great Recession. I can't remember yep. if it was 2009 or 2010. Um, that is something that, that we may need to explore. Um, and we'll be exploring that in advance of the June, uh, uh, June 9th board meeting. None of these conversations are conversations that we want to have. Um, our hand has just been forced on this. Uh, are reductions to salaries for administrators, teachers, and classified staff being considered? Yeah, that, that is being considered. Uh, I think as you noted earlier that you know, pretty much all options are uh, on the table uh, or a combination of mm -hmm. options. Uh, mm -hmm. for this um, this financial issues that the district are in. Um, discussions will be happening with representatives uh, in the coming weeks uh, to uh, discuss that and many other options. Mm -hmm. Good, and we're open to creative ideas to help us to, to navigate this in, in, in the best way that we can. And, and we're gonna and, need a lot of creative yeah, ideas. Yeah, for sure. Um, this is a hard one to cut because we have, we have uh, such a wide variance of the uh, income or the salaries of our employees from um, from me uh, yeah. and all the way to our lowest compensated employees. But if you had to estimate how many full-time positions we'd be looking at eliminating, if that's all we decided to do mm -hmm. was just to eliminate positions, um, how many positions would you uh, believe, how would you estimate, we, and I know business people hate to estimate yeah. about stuff like this but estimate we'd have to eliminate. So from a high level, we have about 800 full-time equivalent mm -hmm. employees mm -hmm. in the school district. So if you assume a, you know, across the board, um, we've had a reduction of 10%. Mm -hmm. You just look at 10% of 800, mm -hmm. which would be 80 employees. If that was, uh, and I appreciate what you're saying, mm -hmm. if that was the only uh, solution that mm -hmm. the, the district employed. Right, right. and we will use um, all of our creativity to come up with as, as diverse a solution as possible. Yeah. Okay. Um, will class size increase beyond what's currently in the teacher contracts? So any change to contract language would mean to be negotiated. Mm -hmm. um, we are meeting with our partners um, with the Nevada Federation of Teachers um, on options to reduce the budget uh, and class size may be one of them. Mm -hmm. um, but as you know, noted earlier, all options are on the table and uh, you know, we're going to be we're going to be looking for for every penny. Good. Okay. Um, a couple of questions that have come in. Um, let's talk about. Uh, I want to give me one second to see if we. Yeah, this is this question shows up in both places. Uh, one thing that we've heard from the community is about Measure G, right? So so we passed a two hundred twenty million dollar school bond. Yep. Uh, we know that about. Uh, half of those dollars have been uh, are we well past allocating yep. and we're probably another 25% of the way through uh, some of those other dollars. Um, can we use Measure G dollars to help us to solve the fiscal problems that we find ourselves in right now 
uh, to help keep classes small, to help keep compensation up for our employees, et cetera? Yeah, so yeah, that's, this, is a, this is a great question. Um, and it's, you know, a lot of times it's very hard to see money coming in for one purpose and then huge budget reductions on the other side. Uh, but Measure G is a, uh, is a general obligation bond and the, which the voters approved in 2016. And it has very specific language, not only in the language that went to the voters, but just generally within general obligation bonds that you cannot use that money for operations. Um, so uh, unfortunately, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's a disappointing that, you know, we have money available for facilities in a time when we need that. Um, but you know, one one upside potentially, and there's there's so many downsides that one potential upside is right now um, construction costs. Um, we've seen a little dip mm -hmm. in construction costs. Mm -hmm. So while we cannot use them for our budget and to you know help this budget, which we would love to do, yeah. um, but we can hopefully get a little bit more bang for our buck mm -hmm. um, in our Measure G funds. Yeah, and so with. Um so we're, we're at 30 minutes. I think we'll just go a little bit long. We got a, a few more questions to go. I think it would be best for the community to just commit yeah. maybe another 10 minutes or so to this. Um, on, the, on the topic of bonds, uh, hopefully what, this, what you said that some of our projects are coming in under budget yeah. right now, hopefully that'll help us to offset some of the costs that occurred when during the PG&E Public safety power shutoffs, the and yep. and the and some of the issues we've had with tariffs on steel prices and things, those drove up costs. So hopefully we'll be able to capture some of that back, yep. and it'll, it'll allow us to complete some of the projects that we didn't think we're going to be able to because we were running out of money. Yeah. One one thing also mm -hmm. too, um, we do we are um, the board has been very clear about this is when we do construction projects and we're looking at that a lot of times we're looking to reduce operational costs. Mm -hmm you know, with more energy efficient um, HVAC uh, or a more energy efficient roof mm -hmm. like we put on at San Ramon, mm -hmm. um, which is going to save us money and, you know, some of the field work that's going to reduce some of our operational costs. So while it can only be used for money, uh, the board has been uh, very active in making sure that our projects help the uh, education as well as potentially uh, a nice uh, help to our budget. Good. And one question from the, the, the chat bar today, uh, is this gonna, is the, this economic slowdown going to have any impact on the construction of the buildings that are currently underway across our district? No, we are, we are, under, we are under contract for mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. um, buildings um, and we're continuing. They're considered essential by the governor. Um, and so uh, we've, we've continued the construction on that. Um, and in fact, we've, uh, we've actually seen a little bit of a speed up in, you know, because our, pro our projects have been considered mm -hmm. essential. Mm -hmm. So okay. uh, it will not, it'll, if anything, it'll speed them up by a month or two. Okay, sounds good. Um, we're getting a lot of re-entry uh, committee questions. I wanna touch on a few of those a little bit. Um, so one of the questions that we have is what will class sizes look like for 21, 22? Um, this is the, the million dollar question right now. Um, we're working closely with all the districts across Marin County to come up with a plan for what reentry looks like. Uh, we'll present that plan to uh, Dr. Matt Willis and Marin County Public Health, uh, and they will help us to land on the appropriate numbers for class sizes to allow us to, to reopen schools in the fall, which we know is critically important to our community and to our economy. Um, but we can't give you an answer to exactly what that's going to look like right now. Um, also, along the topics of reentry, we have some questions about advanced placement courses. Uh, is this going to affect our, our ability to offer advanced placement courses? Um, again, uh, we don't know exactly what that's going to look like. You know, um, there's a big part of me that wants me to, wants to say no. You know, I have a senior this year and, a, and a, a child who's a junior in college, and I know how much they appreciated the challenge of those programs. Um, right now, it's just too early to tell um, what the impact is going to look like on our entire master schedules for our high school. So please don't take that as as me hedging my bets and not wanting to give you an answer. The truth is it's just too early for us to say what high school course offerings are gonna look like next year. Um, we'll continue to work on that and as soon as we have more information, we will let you know about that. Um, again, you know, lots of questions about reentry. 
Uh, the reentry task force is holding their first really large meeting tonight between 130 and 150 community members. Uh, they're going to be working hard on all of the domains that we need to consider as we bring students back to school, uh, with the number one priority being how do we do that safely. Um, also thinking about how do we support families who aren't ready to have their children come back to school, whether it be for their child's health issues or the family's health issues or just concerns that people have around uh, bringing children back to school. Um, so we're, we're looking at all of that. All we can say is that the 2021 school year is going to look different. Um, and we're working really hard to make sure that that difference is as great as it can be and we capitalize on as many opportunities as we can to make it a great school year. Uh, okay, next question. Um, let's, let's jump to uh, pension contributions. Uh, this is something that, that there's always a lot of conversation in Marin County about, um, about contributions to pensions. Uh, one thing that I think our community uh, isn't aware of sometimes is that NUSD has no control over our contributions to our employees' pensions. Um, for our, our certificated employees, that's our teachers and our uh, principals, among others. Um, the pension contribution rates for school districts are, are uh, set in law, um, and we cannot make any changes to those. And for our classified employees, uh, there is a board that oversees the, the PERS system, and they get to set the rates for that. But uh, NUSD um, does not provide any additional pension contributions. We just follow the contributions um, as we're required to by law. Um, anything else on that, uh, Yancey? Um, no, I, I think that's, that's really important to note that, you know, uh, unfortunately our community or our board um, has no authority to uh, change the benefits or the contribution rates. Mm -hmm. um, that's, all, that's all set up um, in state law and is, uh, is, is guided by those, the legislature and the PERS board. Okay. Uh, any, any, I, but we do have a little bit of softening for our contribution rates for the next couple of years that the governor proposed. Yeah. Again, this is just proposed. Absolutely. So in the governor's proposal, uh, he uh, proposes to use some money that had been set aside this year for long-term pension reform mm -hmm. um, as a two-year um, support to districts. Mm -hmm. Now, it's, it's important to note that that's actually not a reduction in our rates. It's just relief from increases in the reductions of our rates over the next two years. So it still goes up. It just doesn't go as much as up as much as we thought it was going to go. Absolutely. And uh, the other thing, um, you know, uh, the legislative analyst office is uh, the nonpartisan group that looks at these things, um, and they were they were fairly negative okay. on, on that proposal. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think there there is a good amount of political support. So we'll see where that goes. Yeah. Again, we just got to wait and see. Yep. Okay, and then our final question. Uh, when will the parcel tax be revisited? So as you're aware, in March, uh, we put uh, Measure A on the ballot. Um, and unfortunately, we got more than 50% of support, and I think a little bit more than 55% of the support. But unfortunately, in order for a parcel tax to pass, it needs the supermajority, which is a little bit more than two thirds or 66.7% of the votes need to be positive. Uh, we did not achieve that, obviously, and so um, actually coming up at our next board meeting on June 9th, uh, the board is going to be getting a presentation by TBWB, who are the parcel tax consultants that supported us with the parcel tax, uh, and they're going to share with us sort of the, the breakdown of the demographics. Uh, they're thinking about why uh, parcel taxes didn't pass at the same rate in the March election that they have historically. Um, this wasn't just an anomaly that happened in, in Novato or even in Marin County where Tamil Pius Union High School District's uh, parcel tax also didn't pass. Um, this is something that happened across the state. Um, so he's going to give us his thinking about uh, why that happened, what we can learn from it, and then we will work with the board to uh, determine uh, if and when uh, it's the right time for us to go back out to the community and ask for more support with the parcel tax. So um, anything to add? No, I just wanted to thank uh, the NUSD community for sending in such great questions and especially for a lot of the recommendations. So we'll be looking at a lot of those and be bringing that uh, to the board for consideration. Um, and I think 
that uh, you know you discussing that there's a lot of unknowns out mm-hmm, there, mm-hmm. Um, and you know we have to, you know we have to prepare for the worst case scenario, and then hope that there are you know some other positive things on the horizon. Mm-hmm. So you know we're going to prepare for the worst and and still hope for the best, mm-hmm. um, but it's going to be hard work. Yeah. Um, over the next really over the next year. Yeah. Good. Okay. Thank you. And I'm going to do a, a bonus question. Oh. Bonus question. Um, the bonus question is, how can the community and families best help, uh, help NUSD in this situation? Um, and, and, and sometimes the obvious answer is to go to the financial and you can just cut us a check. Um, and you know, I'm gonna be maybe a little controversial and say that I don't think that's the best way that you can help. I think the best way that you can help is to love NUSD and to support NUSD and work with us through this problem. Um, that's the way we're going to get through this is to get through it together, to get through it by supporting each other, to get through it by being empathetic and being understanding that, um, you know, we need to do the best for the, for our system, even though it means sometimes that we have to make sacrifices for our own things that we value the most. Um, so that's the most important way that I can say that you can help NUSD through these difficult times. Um, There are other ways you can help. You know, we do have some great partners in this work that do help to to fill the gaps uh, in our ability to offer programs. And and School Fuel is a great example of that, our our Novato uh, Foundation that supports our public education. So supporting School Fuel and their fundraising. And also our our PTAs uh, or PTOs on each of our campuses. Most of them have PTAs, um, but we do have one PTO. I believe it's just one. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, supporting those important programs who are super local on the campuses, have the pulse of what's going on and what's needed um, and are doing just great work to support uh, to support our schools. So I'm sure that those groups would uh, would be willing to, to step up, give an additional support from you. And if you can support financially, that's great. If you can support by uh, volunteer hours, that's great as well. Just whatever you can do to help would be greatly appreciated. So that's your bonus question. Um, I wanna thank everybody for spending this time with us today. I know this isn't the most uplifting of topics, but we still think that it's best that the community knows what's going on so that we can uh, have a united front working through this. Um, And just thank you again for your time today and have a great afternoon.